electoral votes. And you have been watching a CBS News special report of the chaos on Capitol Hill. Thank you for joining us here on CBS 21 News. In Washington, D.C. today, protesters breached the U.S. Capitol as Congress was meeting to certify the electoral college votes. At the same time, a group converged in Washington in what is being called the March for Trump. This afternoon, protesters breached the Capitol. And again, this is a live look where at this hour, we know at least one person has been shot. Lawmakers were meeting at the time to certify the votes and were expected to affirm the victory for President-elect Joe Biden. Shortly before the breach, an announcement played and both chambers went into recess. All of this unfolded shortly after President Trump addressed his supporters, vowing, quote, never to concede the election. And a short while ago, Vice President-elect Joe Biden spoke about the unrest. I call on this mob to pull back and allow the work of democracy to go forward. You've heard me say before in different contexts, the words of a president matter, no matter how good or bad that president is. At their best, the words of a president can inspire. At their worst, they can incite. President Trump released a statement calling for calm shortly after the president-elect spoke. You have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. We don't want anybody hurt. It's a very tough period of time. There's never been a time like this. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Jasmine Brooks and I'm Joel D. Smith. As the drama unfolds in the Capitol, Pennsylvania lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are calling for calm. Let's start tonight with CBS 21's Michael Gorsinger. He is live in York County where lawmakers are uniting behind this message. Mike. Well, Jasmine, bipartisanship, certainly a difficult thing to come by during these times, almost unheard of, but it seems like this at least seems to be a rallying point. All the lawmakers across Pennsylvania coming together to condemn the act of violence here at the U.S. Capitol and social media giving us a real time minute by minute look at these historic moments. So let's take a look at how some local lawmakers are reacting. First, staunch Trump supporter Congressman Scott Perry saying in a tweet, quote, today in D.C. should have been about meaningful debate, peaceful protests, and the rule of law, not chaos and talks of a coup. I unequivocally condemn any violence and criminal acts taking place and pray for a restoration of peace. Democratic Senator Bob Casey's staff updating the Pennsylvania Senator's Twitter account saying, quote, Senator Casey was the only member of our team in the Capitol complex today. He is safe and taking direction from the United States Capitol Police. And finally, Republican Senator Pat Toomey tweeting, quote, this is an absolute disgrace. I appreciate the work of the United States Capitol Police under difficult circumstances. I'm currently safe, as are the few members of my staff that are currently at the Capitol complex. Now, that statement coming just moments before Senator Senator Toomey on the floor of the United States Senate demanding that his colleagues vote against the election challenge. A fundamental defining feature of a democratic republic is the right of the people to elect their own leaders. It's now our duty, it's our responsibility to ensure that that right is respected in this election and preserved for future elections. Now, those words spoken just about 30 minutes before the walls of the Capitol were breached and both the House and Senate chambers evacuated. At this point, it's unknown when lawmakers will be able to get back to work at hand certifying those electoral votes. And I will say on a personal level, for someone that lived in D.C. for some 10 years, it really is tough to take on these images, to look and see a building that I've been at so many times and so has so much history. It's definitely a tough thing to watch. Of course, we'll continue to monitor our local reaction from Pennsylvania lawmakers, including including Congressman Lloyd Smucker, who will join CBS 21 News live in just several minutes. Live in York County, Michael Gorsegner, back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Michael. Pennsylvania still in the spotlight, even as the nation's attention shifts to the Capitol. The governor sharing his thoughts, saying, quote, what we're seeing today is not democracy. It's an attempted coup. We had a free and fair election. The results were clear. Republicans from President Trump to PA legislators need to stop the disinformation and tell their supporters the truth before there's further violence. So that shot at PA legislators isn't sitting too well with some. Others do think it's justified. Depends on who you ask, I guess. In CBS 21's Ryan Eldridge, live outside the Capitol in Harrisburg, he's asking folks what they think. What are you hearing right now, Ryan? 
Well, Joel D., when it comes to state legislators, there are some that I've spoken with this afternoon who aren't prepared to share any thoughts about what's happening in Washington, D.C. All of those folks, they're Republicans. Democrats, meanwhile, they have no problem condemning what's happening in Washington, D.C. And Republican leadership, they've also stepped up and condemned what they've seen happening. A lot of this stems from what we saw over the course of the election cycle, and it's something that the governor addressed today at a press conference at noon. He said right now, Republicans, they're not acting in good faith. He says it's gone from misinformation for some to disinformation. Republicans on the other side here in the state, they say really, at this point, the focus should be on Act 77, which changed the election procedure here in Pennsylvania. They say there were gaps that were dealt with uniquely in ways that they didn't think was done properly. And ultimately, they say that's what has led to chaos here in the Commonwealth and chaos in D.C. I think that we have seen a lot of confusion and a lot of chaos. I think we have to be guided by rules and by laws because when we fail to follow the Constitution and fail to follow our election laws, chaos ensues. And I, and I want to be clear here, that video was from yesterday, so all is quiet now in the Capitol. Some state Republican lawmakers, they're directly calling out the group in D.C. Torin Ecker from Cumberland County, a representative there, says, quote, This is the most disgusting act of patriotism I've ever seen in my life. This is the most un-American thing I have ever seen. This nonsense needs to stop now. End quote. Meanwhile, Democrats across the state are saying that Republican rhetoric has led to confusion and an effort to undermine the results. Our Republican colleagues in the Senate simply don't want and cannot accept the outcome of this election and will continue to be part of this much broader uh, conversation that's led by President Trump to undermine and take steps to uh, allow folks to believe that there were problems with the election when there were none. Yeah, so Republicans saying that uh, they still want to see more fairness moving forward. The lieutenant governor chiming in tonight on Twitter, keeping it simple, saying democracy will prevail. We'll continue to gather these responses from state legislators. We'll have much more coming up tonight at 530 Live in Harrisburg. Ryan Eldridge, CBS 21 News. Ryan, thank you. Well, Democrats need to win both runoff races in Georgia, and they now seem to be on pace as Democrat John Ossoff has now won his race against incumbent Senator David Perdue after Raphael Warnock unseated Senator Kelly Loeffler. I will look forward to serving you in the United States Senate with integrity, with humility, with honor. Voters of this state across racial and geographical and cultural lines stood up and said it's about time we had someone in Washington who's thinking about ordinary people. A CBS News exit poll found the pandemic weighed heavily on voters, and more than half said they experienced financial hardship. All right, let's take a break now and talk about the weather, even though that's kind of gloomy, too. We've got all the gloom and uh, cloud cover with us, and now added to that, a little bit of a breeze. Check out these winds coming out of the northwest now at about 14 miles an hour, 12 over in Philly. So we're still going to be breezy tonight, still breezy into tomorrow. Check out this cloud cover as it just wouldn't break. I mean, you see some breaks, maybe a little peak, and you get excited, and then the clouds just went out. So I do think things improve, but not until tomorrow. So 9 o'clock tonight, we're cloudy, mid-30s, late tonight. 32 by tomorrow morning as we clear out a little bit down to 28 degrees. More sunshine and more quiet weather as we head toward the weekend. We'll show you that with the seven day coming up in just a few minutes. Guys, back to you. Tom, thank you. We are now only three days away from the 2021 Pennsylvania Farm Show. We'll tell you how one attraction has been able to make a name for itself in only three years. And we're continuing to follow chaos on Capitol Hill. This is a live look. We'll be right back. You're watching CBS 21 News at 5. And of course, we continue to follow the chaos at Capitol Hill, where there is a live look right now. Uh, here is a live look in D.C. Now, the mayor has set a 6 p.m. curfew. It is now 510. Again, a live look on Capitol Hill. A record number of over 131,000 people are now hospitalized with COVID-19 across the country. In California, ICU admissions are up 22% in the last two weeks. And EMTs arriving at some hospitals are being forced to hold patients in ambulances 
as healthcare workers search for open beds. It used to be a seven to 10 minute drive to a hospital and now we're waiting two, three, four hours minimum. And as resources run low, EMTs are being told to conserve oxygen and only give it to patients if their levels fall below 90%. Uh, it's been hard to come by, but finally we get back to some sunshine tomorrow and as we round out the weekend, head into the weekend. I'll show you my first winning forecast coming up next. Well, right now we have Republican U.S. Representative Lloyd Smucker uh, live on the telephone with us. He was at the Capitol when it was breached. Smucker represents the 11th District, and that represents part of Lancaster and York counties. He joins us again now live. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, can you take us through what happened and what you were aware of when it happened? Sure. I was actually not uh, on the House floor at the time you saw the floor uh, being breached due to COVID. Uh, many members were watching the proceedings uh, on the floor from other locations in the Capitol uh, complex, as was I. So much of what, other than sounds we're hearing outside, much of what uh, um, unfolded, we were watching on screen, just as you are. I do want to say this is an absolute... Uh, travesty. Congress is here to do the work of the people and what we are seeing is a sad day in American history and I want to condemn it in the strongest possible terms. Can I ask where you are now? Uh, yeah, we've been uh, asked not to disclose. I will say that um, I, I had a limited staff here today due to uh, COVID restrictions. Uh, all of those individuals and myself uh, are safe and are in a secure location um, thanks to the work of the Capitol Police. From what I understand, Democrats want to continue um, in a safe location, continue with these proceedings. Do you see that happening tonight? Well, I think um, you know we are still being told there's an internal uh, breach or threat uh, in the Capitol, and obviously they're going to need to secure uh, what's happening here on the ground as things continue to unfold. There's additional uh, help coming from Maryland and Virginia uh, police and the National Guard, and so. Uh, what I'm asking is the protesters, uh, you know, who I'm sure, uh, who I know, um, are supporters uh, or have been, many at least have been supporters of the president and are, have concerns about the election, but this is not the way to resolve this. The House is going uh, through uh, the uh, procedures uh, to do that, as it's done every four years. And so I ask everyone who is here to leave and to leave now. This is not who we are as Americans. At this hour, it is 516. It is getting dark in D.C. The mayor of D.C. has set a curfew for just 45 minutes from now. The National Guard is on scene. So what are you and your colleagues with you right now saying at this hour? Well. Uh, you know, I think uh, we're all horrified by what has unfolded here. Uh, we all want to go back to doing the people's uh, business uh, and hope to do that as, as quickly as possible. We're being uh, told to stay put, uh, to stay where we are uh, until, uh, until the situation is under control. All right, Representative Lloyd Smucker, we thank you for your time. Hopefully we can talk to you again soon. And now, CBS 21's Proudly Pennsylvanian 2021 Farm Show, sponsored by Penn State Health. And our 2021 Pennsylvania Farm Show preview does continue tonight as we highlight the calving corner. In today's Proudly PA, our Jesse McDonough shows us how it's inspiring the next generation of farmers. Thousands of kids and their parents stake out the calving corner at the Pennsylvania Farm Show every year for a chance to see a real life baby calf being born. And that's kind of um, what we want to show people. We want to show that miracle of life and at the same time provide them the opportunity to get questions answered and learn more about how our farmers take care of their cows every day to make sure that that milk in the grocery store is safe. In addition, the Cabin Corner encourages the next generation of farmers through its internship program. Uh, my favorite part was honestly just engaging with consumers. There's a lot of misinformation about the dairy 